Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the More Than a Mother podcast. This is your host, LaJuan Moses, back with you again for another great episode. Now, if you had a chance to catch my Women of Color podcasters interview on IG Live this past weekend, I let it be known that I would be doing a series on domestic violence this month for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. If you don't know, by day, I do assist victims of crime with receiving services. So I work with a lot of domestic violence victims. I have been doing this for about 12, 13 years now, probably 15 years total. And so I do a lot to help domestic violence victims. I do a lot of education and training on that topic. So I figured why not bring that topic to my show and discuss it since domestic violence is something that impacts all mothers. However, today I felt it only right to switch up things and do bring you something new. Now I know that we all experience the outage of Facebook and Instagram on Monday. And I tell you that it was like the world stopped. No one knew what to do. No one knew what was happening. It was like, oh my God, Instagram, Facebook, it's down. And it was down for an extended period of time. And then in that time, I don't know about you, but I learned about the interview that was done by the whistleblower the day before and where she started to reveal some statistics about Facebook and some statistics about Instagram that to me, I found kind of alarming. The one that really stuck out to me was the impact of Instagram on teenage girls. And I believe it was like 13.7%. It had like a negative impact with uh, thoughts of suicide. And then also there were statistics on eating disorders. And to me, that was very alarming. Just thinking about how how many teenagers are on Instagram, on TikTok, on Snapchat, on all the different social media platforms. And while this was only research from Instagram because it was a Facebook whistleblower, it got me thinking, what are the statistics? How is social media impacting our children as a whole? And really, I was thinking about my own girls and how they use social media and just how this social media platform, really even for adults, it's become, it's a great thing to have, a great platform to have, but it really, you really are at risk for cyber bullying. There's a lot of bullying that goes on on social media. I mean, we see it every day from the trolls, as we call them, and the celebrities' comments to people, quote unquote, exposing people, these TikTok trends that are happening where people are getting exposed for different things. I mean, there's just so much happening in this world of social media that it really is alarming as a whole. And it got me thinking as a mom, okay, social media is not something that we can really keep our kids from. I mean, of course, we can keep them off the platforms, not let them, allow them to have, have accounts. But then we think about ourselves and how we use social media and how we have all these accounts. And I mean, of course, we could say that, okay, our kids can't have accounts. We're not going to let them do social media. But then you run the risk of our kids getting these Finsta accounts, as they call them, these fake Instagrams or these fake accounts where they're hi- they start to hide stuff from you. And I really got to thinking, okay, so how can we as mothers, how can we navigate this world of social media? I mean, we talk about all the time about how we can't fall into the comparison trap, comparing ourselves to other moms on social media. But do we really dive into the fact of our kids falling into this comparison trap? Our kids wanting to look a certain way, their hair to be a certain way, their bodies to be a certain way because these images that they see online. And we don't really, that I know I really dive into that. I mean, I think some of the same practices go into effect to where The things that we do to not fall into the comparison trap, we also need to pass them things on to our children. But also there are things that are behind the scenes, things that need to happen that are off of social media to really help grow our kids, nurture them, help them to be the best that they can be. So really we're sitting here thinking, okay, what is some advice? How can we do this? Because keeping our kids off of social media is really not realistic and we don't want them to start to sneak around. So one thing I could think of was have that open line of communication to really talk to your kids about their social media accounts, talk to them about the things that they may see, the things they encounter, because believe me, kids these days know 
way more than we ever did, but start to talk to them about their experience on social media. Talk to them about the things they may see. Find out if they are having any challenges, if they're encountering any bullying type issues or anything like that, because it really does exist. And I mean, I keep that line of communication open. I want to know what's happening. You know, go into those accounts. I want to see the messages. I want to know what's happening, who you're talking to, what's going on, asking those questions, because my kids have fallen into that quote unquote cyber bullying type thing. But I'm thankful for having that open line of communication to where they were able to come and tell me about it. We were able to talk about it and go through the methods of blocking someone or getting rid of that person so that we don't have to see those things. And that brings me to another point to really let kids know that they have that power in their hands, really. We can cater our social media experience to what we want it to be. So if someone is doing things that we don't like, if we're seeing things we don't like, things that bring us down, even as adults, we have that choice to unfollow. We can block. If someone's sending us messages that we don't want to receive, block that person. Get them off of your platforms. It's really about not letting the social media kind of have that power over us that it has had for a long time. And I think that so many of us forget that we have that power to kind of control our social media experience. So yes, there are the algorithms. Yes, there are certain things that the system controls, what we see, what we don't see. But we also have that control with the things that we like, the things we don't like, the messages that we allow to come to us, the things that we entertain, the things that we respond to. It's really kind of empower ourselves, empower our kids and all to take back some of that power to know that, okay, I can block someone. I don't have to entertain this. I don't have to deal with this. And having, as I said, the first point, that open line of communication kind of being that safe space for your child, the space of no judgment. Now, I know a lot of times we want to tell our kids, okay, this is a safe space. There's no judgment here. We always say, I'm not going to get mad if you tell me, but then they tell us certain things. And inside we want, we're like freaking out. And a lot of times it wants to come out, but it's important to maintain that safe space because we want our kids to be able to come to us when they have challenges, not just on social media, just in life in general. We want our kids to be able to come to us, to confide in us, to come to us with these issues. So while we may freak out on the inside, it is up to us to really take that information and absorb it and help our kids to process and deal with it. I mean, this social media, this internet world, as I said, it's a great thing to have. But I know as an adult, as a person, my own struggles with it and how I have to take the time to block people or unfollow people when I feel like it's impacting my mental health. I have to take those steps. And then also disconnecting. I, you know, I'm a proponent for disconnecting, for taking a break, for resting, and knowing that we don't have to always be on social media, always be scrolling, always be connected to our phones. And I think that is another message to put to our kids that it is okay to disconnect. They don't have to constantly be on TikTok. They don't have to constantly be on Snapchat, Instagram. I don't even think kids really use Facebook that much these days. And the way I'm seeing it, they're really coming off of Instagram. They're mostly hanging out on TikTok these days and Snapchat, but just knowing that we don't have to always be connected. We don't have to feel obligated to always entertain, to always reply, to always respond, letting them know that it's okay to take that break, okay to do something different, find some other hobbies, find some other things that they enjoy so that we're not always connected to this content, so that we're not just constantly consuming, 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 and just being overwhelmed by these messages and just hearing when I was listening to the whistleblower interview, just hearing how these experiences are catered for us and how she was even talking about the hate and the polarizing content that is pushed. Just thinking about that content that we constantly consume and then with the teenage girls with this eating disorder content and how it's like this cycle that you see stuff that is kind of detrimental to you, but yet you're basically addicted to it to where you constantly have to consume it. So it's up to us to really take those breaks, to take that step back so that we are regaining that power. We're disconnecting. We're doing something different. So whether that is doing some dances, going out for a walk, finding something that you guys can do as a family, just finding a way to pull back from that phone, pull back from that social media, and really just to put in different messages. Because 
while I believe that, yes, there is an impact that social media has on our children, it has on us, I still believe that at the core of it, a lot of what we learn is in the home. A lot of those messages are from the homes. If we are teaching certain things in the home, that are kind of reinforcing our experiences that we have outside. And that speaks to body positivity and just putting those messages and feeding our children with loving words and loving messages so that they're not going out and looking for it in all the wrong places or getting that message from that person who was telling them something nice because they may not have heard something nice in their own home. It's really about nurturing your kids. Yes, social, yes, the outside forces, the social media, the entertainment, all that does play a role, but we also have to do our job at home. Be that role model for our kids. So if our kids constantly see us speaking negative about ourselves, about our body, about our images, then of course that message is going to feed over to them. So then when they see something online, they may feel that they have to look like this or be like this to be accepted. But what if we start switching up that narrative? What if we're changing the narrative in the home to where we have that body positivity? We're talking about healthy living and healthy lifestyle instead of critiquing how we live and critiquing ourselves, looking in the mirror, saying lovely messages about ourselves, letting our kids see us uplift ourselves and speak positive to ourselves. I really believe that that has a greater impact no matter what the outside forces, no matter what's happening on social media, when you're teaching that stuff in the home, when you're showing the kids, when you're modeling that behavior, you are your kid's biggest role model, no matter what entertainment person they find, social media influencer, YouTube star, whatever it is. At the end of the day, you are still your kid's biggest influence. So yes, social media plays a role in all of our lives. I do believe in the research that the whistleblower leaked with the impact on teenage girls and really just want to stress out here that if you have teenage girls out here on these platforms, even young girls, be sure that you're communicating with them. Be sure that you're talking with them. Be sure that you are letting them know all that is going on, keeping those lines open, helping them decipher that truth from that fiction so that we can really nurture our kids because we don't want to isolate them. We don't want to take them off of social media. We don't want them sneaking behind our backs to do these things. We really want it to be an environment to where we're involved in what's happening. We know what's going on and we are educating and helping them through the process. So as we know, social media has the good and the bad sides and that is with everything and anything. But I know that I myself hearing this knowledge the statistics and everything that came out yesterday. It has me changing how I'm viewing social media, my kids' involvement on social media, and it's really bringing it to my attention to make sure that I stay in tune, that I stay in touch, and I'm keeping the lines of communication open so that I know to the best of my ability what my kids' social media experience is. Now, of course, recognizing as a parent, our kids are not going to always tell us everything, but it's up to us to really build that safe space, to do what we can, to provide that environment in hopes that our kids feel confident in us and feel comfortable enough to come to us in the good times and when they have a challenging time. So we really go out here and do what we can, do the best that we can, love on our kids, nurture them, and just keep that impact of social media in mind so that we are being conscious that our kids are not always in front of a screen or not always scrolling, get them to disconnect, reinforce with the positive messages, have that brave and safe space, keep those open lines of communication open and teach them the power that they have in this whole social media game. That was really just something I wanted to bring. It was on my heart just to talk about Yes, I will be bringing content about domestic violence awareness. We will be talking about that, especially the impact on mothers and children and all in this situation. Yes, this is more than a mother. And there are so many components to us outside of business, outside of productivity. These are real core issues. And I'm really feeling, being, feeling that I'm being pulled in the direction of not only addressing the pursuing your dreams and being a great mom at the same time, but getting to the core getting to those issues that impact us as women and as mothers. If you are enjoying this new direction, if you are enjoying, I won't even say new direction, if you are enjoying this full picture coming together, 
be sure to screenshot this episode and let me know that you are enjoying the new content. I love hearing from you. Speaking of Instagram, go ahead and tag me in your Instagram stories at Lamon Moses so that I can see it. I really feel good about this direction that we're in and bringing that full picture together outside of business and self-care and all the things that we've talked about in the past, really getting to that root and addressing all the issues or most many of the issues that impact us as women and as mothers. And you know, you can always connect with me, of course, on my website, lawanmoses.com. Head over there, join my email list, get your free down loadable productivity guide, your self-care guide, join that community because if the event that Instagram, Facebook, social media goes out again, you want to be on that list so that you can know when my podcast episodes are going up, when I'm bringing you new great information and new great resources and when I have courses or anything to offer that can really benefit you or even just dropping an inspirational message of the week. So head over to lawanmoses.com. Be sure to become a part of my community. I am so excited to bring a community and get a mom community going. That is coming down the pipeline soon. I am aiming for early 2022 with that. But for now, you can connect with me on Instagram at lawanmoses and also on my website, lawanmoses.com. Head over there get on my email list, and I can't wait to talk to you. So remember, do the best that you can as a mom. Social media has the good and the bad parts to it. Just keep those lines of communication open. Stay aware, stay educated, and do the best you can. And of course, things are going to happen, but be sure to get back up and get back in there.